One morning, Henry found himself stuck on Gordon's Hill. He had tried to tackle the notorious Grant alone, but unfortunately hadn't succeeded. He began to hear his impatient passengers complaining. Where's Edward? he exclaimed. The guard walked up to the cab to speak to the driver and fireman. I've called for a banker, but we will have to wait until Edward has finished helping a good train come the other way. At that moment, Douglas appeared over the top of the hill. He whistled to indicate to Edward that he could continue his journey alone. Come on, Edward! snorted Henry rudely. We haven't got all day, you know! Edward didn't reply. When he had finally been turned around and changed lines, he found Henry, who had granted permission to reverse down to the bottom of the hill. Edward gently buffered up to the rear coach. Ready, Henry! called Edward. Come on, come on, puffed Henry. Get pushing, get pushing! As the train began to crawl up the hill, the two engines were working hard. Clouds of steam rocketed into the air as Edward was pushing with all of his might. They were nearly at the top of the hill when there was a loud bang. Steam shot from either side of Edward. Henry continued forwards, but the lack of support from behind soon took its toll. Henry slipped fiercely and ground to a halt. Suddenly the weight of his train began to pull him backwards, and he rolled back into Edward. Edward's driver applied the brakes fiercely as Henry and the entire train's weight was forced upon him. With his brakes screeching loudly, the train was brought to a safe stop, back at the bottom of the hill. Are you alright, Edward? shouted Henry. No, muttered Edward in pain. Edward was quickly taken to the works. The fat controller came to see him. What's the damage, Inspector? he asked worriedly. A burst cylinder, I'm afraid, replied the Inspector. I hate to say this, but Edward is very old. It would be in both yours and Edward's best interest if he were to retire from banking duties. The fat control listened carefully. Branch line work suits him well, but doing that and banking trains up Gordon's Hill means that he's being run into the ground. I'm surprised this hasn't happened sooner at the age he is. The fat controller considered the case. Well, Edward, I think it's time to hand over your banking duties to another engine. Yes, sir, agreed Edward sadly. News soon spread around the yards. The fat controller's looking for a new banker, said James. Well, he won't choose me, grunted Gordon. The fat controller would never use an express engine in such a manner as banking. Oh, come on now, Gordon, snorted Don crossly. We all must help out. Aye, Edward's helped keep the trains running for years, and now we must do the same, added Douglas. All the engines found it difficult to keep up their own work as well as sharing the responsibility as banker. Because of this, strange things began to happen. Engines began experiencing the presence of another engine, one that wasn't there. Engines struggling with their trains would suddenly be bumped from behind and feel the strength of another engine pushing the train up the hill, only to discover the real banker coming the other way helping another train. They could all hear a steam engine hard at work, a screaming whistle alerting them they had finished pushing and starting to ease off. Crews began talking of a mysterious banker assisting trains at Gordon's Hill. The engines began to feel nervous. The story soon spread, and all of the engines had made their own conclusions. Pip and Emma were most intrigued, but weren't convinced. There's a ghost engine, I'm sure of it, quivered Oliver. Nonsense, exclaims Pip. You're all jumping to conclusions. It's not nonsense, grumbled Duck. It's very much real. Just because there's something happening that you can't explain doesn't mean it's a ghost, laughed Emma. It's alright for you two. You didn't need a banker, huffed Donald. There has to be an explanation. All this never happened when Edward was banker, and now all of a sudden there's a ghost helping train, said Pip. The engines thought for a moment. You're all overworked and your minds are playing tricks on you, soothed Emma. 
I'm telling you, I haven't lost my marbles yet. I know what I feel, barked Donald. And there's something on that hill. I know it. Pip and Emma dismissed the thought and departed the big station. Later that day, the weather had changed for the worse. The rain pelted down. It made the mood on Gaunt Hill even more tense. Pip and Emma were returning back to the big station. They glided effortlessly through Marin Station. Keep your eyes peeled for the ghost, teased Emma. As they approached Gordon's Hill, they could hear a steam engine working hard on the other side. They then heard the familiar whistle of James. <laughs> Some ghost that is, chuckled Pip. But suddenly, Emma heard another whistle. It screeched through the hillside and echoed all around her. As James came to view, he looked very shaken up. He passed him with his good strain. Emma, who was leading, expected to see the banker slowing down at the top of the hill. But as they went over the other side, Emma could see nothing. Where's the other engine? She cried. Where's what? Asked Pip. The banker. I heard the banker and now it's gone. The driver was concerned. Maybe there's been an accident. We'll stop at Edward Station and raise the alarm. When they arrived, they told the station master. He was most confused. That's impossible, he explained. The engine on banking duty is bare and he's currently running late. But I heard a steam engine, insisted Emma. It must have been James. But there was a second whistle too, added Emma. Oh, please, send someone up to check. The only engines available in the yard were Bill and Ben. All traffic was halted, and they set off with the works coach. They inspected all around Gordon's Hill, but no engine could be found. They returned shortly. Emma was very confused, but Bill and Ben believed her. We've heard an engine banking trains too, explained Bill. You can hear it from the yards. It's got an awful shrill whistle that goes right through you, shivered Ben. Oh, Emma, you don't believe in all this ghost rubbish, do you? Grumbled Pip. Emma said nothing as she pulled the train away. Somehow it didn't add up. By nightfall, it was time for the late night express. The mysterious occurrence had plagued her mind so much that she began to suffer engine trouble. A fitter came to see if he could repair her engine. The fitter tried as hard as he could, but he couldn't get Emma's engine to run smoothly. Pip will just have to manage the train on her own, I'm afraid, said the fitter. You may need assistance up Gordon's Hill. Emma gulped. Pip was cross. I can manage, she snapped. I don't want Emma getting ideas in her head about a stupid ghost there. As the passengers began to board, a thick grey fog rolled in. We won't be going very fast tonight, girls, said the driver. Wouldn't be safe in such poor visibility. At last, it was time to depart. Emma said nothing as Pip pulled the train away. All went well until they neared Gordon's Hill. The fog was even thicker. Pip couldn't see a thing, nor could Emma. As they rolled through Edward Station, Pip's driver opened the accelerator and she began to attack the climb. Emma trailed behind. She gasped in shock as an unfamiliar shape of a steam engine stood in the siding and watched them go by. Faster, Pip! Faster! cried Emma. Pip was working hard. The noise of her engine drowned out the calls from her sister far behind. Emma suddenly felt a sick feeling as she could hear the sound of a steam engine getting closer and closer. Quick, Pip! Please go faster, please! begged Emma. The sound grew louder and louder. The tracks began to hum with the approach of another engine. Suddenly, out of the fog, screaming fit to burst was a steam engine. It charged at Emma with great speed. Emma's engine suddenly roared into life and she forcibly pushed the Pip and the train up the hill. They shot over the other side and raced to the next station. Once there, the driver checked Emma over. Are you alright, Emma? asked Pip. She was worried for her sister. 
It was the ghost. I, I saw it. It came at me. It was going to hit us. She cried. Emma, you're scaring me now, but it's true! Pip, unsure what to make of the matter, pulled away cautiously. The news reached the Fat Controller. He took Pip and Emma out of service for a couple of days. When Edward's repairs had been completed, the Fat Controller gathered all his engines at the sheds. Pip and Emma were shunted alongside. It has come to my attention that strange occurrences have been happening at Gordon's Hill, he began. I am sure you all have experienced them one way or another, and of course, I heard of the recent sightings of an engine by Pip and Emma. Is it a ghost, sir? asked Henry. The Fat Controller paused briefly. A lost spirit, shall we say. His name was Conrad. He was a very old engine when I took charge of the railway. An enthusiastic, hard-working and very useful engine. He felt his responsibility deeply as a banker on what is more now commonly known as Gordon's Hill. A kind-hearted engine that would assist even his worst enemy. But, I'm afraid, his eagerness to please got the better of him. One foggy night, a passenger train slipped to a halt in the gradient. Conrad rushed to the scene. The passenger train began to roll back down the hill. I'm sorry to say, Conrad never saw it coming. The engines were horrified. You mean, he crashed to the back of it, sir? Asked Emma quietly. The fat controller nodded. Everyone in the rear coach lost their lives. Conrad was beyond repair. Soon after the accident, rumours of an engine assisting trains began to strike fear into the crews. I believe it was just Conrad and his willingness to help others in need. The crews went on strike and refused to drive trains beyond Wellsworth and Mountain Station. I therefore decided that Edward would become the banker of the hill. His strong work ethic and reliability meant that he could help every train and convince the crew that there was no ghost. Indeed, it must have worked. For the many years Edward has been a banker, there's been no sightings of Conrad. Until now. The engines looked at the Fat Controller solemnly. You can never hide from the past, the Fat Controller said gravely. The engines were lost in their thoughts. Edward no longer banks trains at Gordon's Hill. Instead, he is busy on his branch line. The Fat Controller hired another engine from a heritage railway to help with the trains and become the new banker. Because of this, there are no more sightings of Conrad anymore. The engines sometimes hope to see him, for now they understand. They don't feel frightened of him anymore. Pip, but mostly Emma, felt the saddest. They know he means no harm, and that he isn't scary at all but just an engine who's still willing to be useful, even after death. Pip, Emma, and the other engines agree that should he return, they'll never live in fear of him again. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video because it was not fucking made for kids.